From the James Hansen is just wrong department comes some inconvenient data. Data that Dr. Hansen or anyone in the media could have easily looked up for themselves before writing irresponsible stories like this one. Former Virginia State climatologist Dr. Pat Michaels, in a guest opinion on What's Up With That, said, Hansen claims that global warming is associated with increased drought in the United States. This is a testable hypothesis which he chooses not to test, and, because PNAS isn't truly peer-reviewed for members like him, no one tested it for him. I have drought data that are from NCDC, and the temperature record is Hansen's own. His hypothesis is a complete and abject failure. Mr. Watts looked at the data as well, and he agrees. Hansen's hypothesis is a dud, and in no way supported by NOAA's own data to be scientific fact. But, because it has been spread by an irresponsible and incurious media, it's the dangerous dud. So, let's go to the data. In Watts' research regarding why he didn't think the July 2012 USA temperature of 77.6 degrees Fahrenheit was a record compared to the July 1936 of 77.4 degrees Fahrenheit, he spent some time trying to understand how they computed the value, since NCDC offers no way to replicate it and has so far as not responded to any query about how it's done. In conjunction with a switchover to happen next year from simple division averages to gridded averages, NOAA's National Climatic Data Center offers a visualization tool to plot all sorts of data for the continental USA from NCDC's U.S. Climate Divisions page. A visualization toolkit was created to help users examine snapshots of both data sets for the comparison period, i.e. through December 2009. The tool allows the user to select criteria which are of interest and investigate the comparisons themselves. Parameters included in the toolkit are temperature, precipitation, and a variety of drought indices. Changes in monthly, seasonal, and annual variability can be examined through the use of the interactive time series plots. In addition, slope or trend values by decade and 30 year period may also be added to the output plots. This allows the user to take a closer look at the behavior of the data at a variety of smaller time scales throughout the record. Unfortunately, they don't have 2010 to 2012 data online and Mr. Watts could go to the NCDC FTP site and get the remaining data and plot all of it, but since many people on the alarmist bandwagon don't trust data plots from skeptics, he thought that the fact that these are unmodified 100 plus year plots from NCDC directly outweighed the three years of data they didn't provide. Here's some screen caps output direct from the visualization toolkit. You can visit it yourself and replicate exactly any of these for yourself. First. The conus temperature. No surprise there. In his opinion, GHCN and all of its airport weather stations tends to make the present warmer than the past, with 1998 being warmer than 1934. But that's another old story. Mr. Watts's real interest in this essay is in the precipitation trends and drought trends, which don't go through as many issues with equipment, sitting, adjustments, as temperature does. Here's the national precipitation. Some people say precipitation is down in the summer months due to increasing drought. That's unsupported by the data. Like with conus temperature, there's an upward trend annual precipitation and essentially no trend in summer months. This is curious because if, as Dr. Hansen is quoted as saying regarding U.S. droughts, this is not some scientific theory, Hansen told the Associated Press in an interview, we are now experiencing scientific fact. You'd expect a downward trend in U.S. precipitation. Interestingly, as shown in the plot above, the driest period for precipitation in the United States is 1951 to 1956, followed by a big upswing. But precipitation totals alone is not a measure of drought, soil moisture, and other factors figure in too. Let's look at some drought data. Using NCDC's visualization toolkit, Anthony Watts plotted the major drought indices based on the Palmer Drought Index. 
the Palmer Drought Sensitivity Index, known periodically as the Palmer Drought Index or PDI, attempts to measure the duration and intensity of the long-term drought-inducing circulation patterns. Long-term drought is cumulative, so the intensity of a drought during the current month is dependent on the current weather patterns plus the cumulative patterns of previous months. Since weather patterns can change almost literally overnight from a long-term drought to a long-term wet pattern, the PDSI or PDI can respond fairly rapidly. The hydrological impacts of drought, for example, like reservoir levels, groundwater levels, etc., take longer to develop and it takes longer to recover from them. The Palmer Hydrological Drought Index, another long-term drought index, was developed to quantify these hydrological effects. The PHDI responds more slowly to changing conditions than the PDSI or PDI. Here's the plots. Note that for the Palmer Index, negative values correlate to drier conditions and positive values show wetter conditions. And just in case some people might argue that summer months are most affected, check out this graph. The flatness of the Palmer Drought Severity Index compared to the upward trends of the temperature and precipitation strongly suggests there is no correlation between conus temperature and conus drought severity. But let's not stop there. Let's examine other PDI data types. Here's the modified Palmer Drought Severity Index the operational version of the PDSI, which was defined in Hedding, Haas, and Seibel, 1991. Here's the same data by months. Notice for summer months, the century scale trend is slightly down, but there is still no large century scale trend in drought. So how about the Palmer Hydrological Drought Index? Still essentially flat. Note that while there are slight upper trends in the divisional data plots suggesting less drought, NCDC says this is erroneous and will introduce the new gridded method in 2013. The GHCN values are flat. How about the short-term Palmer Z index? Maybe Hansen's drought correlation is hiding there? As you can see by the data, it's still pretty much flat. Though, there's a spike in the monthly plot for 2009 that beats 1915. As we know, a couple of months of dry conditions does not mean a long-term trend make. So, how about the summer months for a short-term Z-index? Notice short-term summer months Z-index is slightly down in the last 114 years, but not largely so. Certainly nothing like the inverse correlation with the conus temperature we'd expect to see if Hansen's hypothesis was true. Pat Michaels, in his previous opinion piece, noted that Hansen is making a claim that global temperatures are driving U.S. drought and did a scatter plot to gauge correlation between Hansen's own GISS temperature data and the United States Palmer Drought Severity Index with annual data through 2011. There is no correlation. Zip. Zero. Nada. If there were, you'd see the dots align along a diagonal line, but there's not even a hint of that. Of course, the proponents might say that, but, but, but 2012 was a terrible drought. Well, yes, it was, it is, but a few months of a not yet complete year of data does not make a long-term trend. And we've seen worse in the past. In a tweet, New York Times reporter Andrew Revkin agrees, drawing attention to this Sunday essay. This 21st century reconstruction of rainfall for New Mexico was done by this paper. Full details in the links are in the description below going back to whatsupwiththat.com. This paper suggests that what New Mexico experiences today really isn't any different from what it has been experiencing in the past when CO2 levels were far lower. In fact, for the most recent period, New Mexico had greater rainfall. Taken in total, these facts and data say that the scientific fact promoted by Dr. Hansen is pure political hogwash. PNAS should withdraw the paper, and NASA should fire Dr. Hansen for promoting an opinion unsupported by data as scientific fact.